you know, I hate vampires. But why do I hate vampires? I've really examined my inward thinking and I've come to the conclusion that I hate vampires for a few reasons. One, the so-called vampire aesthetic is repellent to me on a purely personal taste basis. Two, the most popular vampire-themed movies and franchises have always left me either enraged or completely unaffected. And finally, three, your typical vampire story can only work in a handful of ways, and they've all been done to the point of triteness. How many goddamn times are we going to have to sit through the exact same story of Woe is me! I'm a monster in human skin! before we lose all sense of empathy and just want the fucker to be staked so he can shut up? Because for me, I reached that point back with David Boreanaz. True, every once in a while someone reimagines the vampire mythos and comes out with something like a Daybreakers, which was an alright action movie and was interesting in of itself, but most of the time it's either your saccharine wretch inducing romance or the too cool for the room aren't we edgy vampire goth flick that's insufferably self-indulgent. And that's why my favorite vampire movie of all time is From Dusk Till Dawn. Yup, the movie where the vampires don't appear until it's half over and they're basically cognizant zombies that are unequivocally monsters is my favorite I've ever seen. No poking around in the depths of the human condition, no pretty boys with problems, no obnoxious scenesters that think they're above it all. Nope, just a bunch of fucking monsters getting blown apart and staked like the bloodsuckers they are by Tom Savini with a fucking dick gun. Oh, and it's also one of the most quotable movies I've ever seen. I mean, them damn burritos ain't good for nothing but a hippie. But he's high on weed. Rule number three, don't you ever try and fucking run on us. Because I got six little friends, and they can all run faster than you can. Try and be pussy for a penny, if you can find cheaper pussy anywhere. Fuck it. <laughs> Which is also why I thought that Blood the Last Vampire was my kind of vampire anime. The one without any vampires in it. Yeah, I know, with a title like Blood the Last Vampire, you think you know what you're gonna get, and while it does deliver in some respects, the one thing it doesn't do is have a vampire. Well, a vampire in name only, but you'll see what I mean. So yeah, I was excited. And then I watched it. And all I've got to say now is that this may be the most impressive tech demo for an anime I have ever seen. But as an actual anime... Let it be said that Blood the Last Vampire has the most behind any 40 minute film I've ever seen. Studio Production IG threw everything they had in making this a reality, including getting Mamoru Oshii to write a light novel to coincide with its Japanese release. But if that weren't enough, IG did the unthinkable and had actual American dub actors come in for their roles. That's right, an anime that makes a clear delineation between Japanese and English. Fucking finally! I can't express to you how rare this is in anime. A bilingual title that forces sub-only fans and dub-only fans to get over themselves and watch it. This in of itself, from an acting and directing standpoint, makes this a highly commendable title to watch, if you're interested in this sort of novelty. I mean, the only other anime that I can think of that had actual English-speaking actors play the role of Americans is Cypher the Video. Um, in your uh, everyday life, does being an actor present a problem? Mm, well, since I am, uh, I'm good at acting in ordinary life, uh, like an Academy winner. And I'm not sure if I should count that because those are clearly not actors. What's more, this directorial decision means that the actress playing our main character, Yoki Kudo, has to act in two different languages, which might be the single hardest thing demanded of an actor, voice, stage, film, or otherwise. And you know what? She pulls it off. Like I said, this is the most impressive tech demo I've ever seen. But a tech demo nonetheless. We begin with our vampire badass, Saya, slaying a salaryman on the train when her handlers rush in for the cleanup. This bateau-looking spook seems to know her quite well, at least well enough to know to not invoke the Lord's name around her. This isn't a interrupterate. Did we get the wrong guy? It just hasn't changed its form yet, Lewis. Take a look inside. Hey! Save it. Oh, Jesus. <gasps> Wait, Saya, get a hold of yourself now! And that is about all the vampiric tendencies she exhibits throughout the entire anime. 
She doesn't like Christian iconography, and she's super strong. That's it. You find out towards the end that she's also ageless, but by then the anime is over. She walks during the day, she shows no other kinds of vampiric powers, and she never drinks blood. She can smell it, apparently, but she never imbibes. In fact, the anime seems to bend over backwards to not even use the V word for God only knows what reason. Don't ever piss her off again. But listen, as far as we know, she's the only remaining original. Original? Hey guys, if you wanted to keep Saya's quote-unquote vampirism a secret, maybe don't call your anime BLOOD THE LAST VAMPIRE! Oh, and that man she killed in the subway? The one that wasn't a... uh... what was it again? This isn't a Chiropterate. Yeah, that. Never brought up again. She killed an innocent man for literally no reason. And the one person who seemed to be concerned about the fact that Saya murdered someone gets a death grip to the jaw. Fantastic. She later states that she can't kill humans, so I guess that means that guy had to have been a monster. But then what's the point of delaying the change? This makes no sense whatsoever. At least the anime moves at a brisk pace, because it's not long before Saya is tasked to go undercover on an American military base to suss out... the... Teropterixes on its on-base high school. Yeah, which explains why there are so many Americans in the anime. And more to the point, the story is set during the Vietnam War, Halloween, 1966. Huh. Maybe I should have reviewed this for Halloween. You know, if this were the least bit scary. Oh, and before you even ask... What the fuck does anything have to do with Vietnam? Not much, the dude. Not much. It must be hard to blend in a high school that's mostly filled with American military brats when you're a Japanese vampire, especially if you have to probe around and find triceratopses in disguise. Well, fuck me, that was quick. I love how Saya is so completely unconcerned with keeping a low profile. She just busts into the nurse's office and hacks up everyone like she was playing Munchkin. I haven't seen such a botched attempt at an assassination since I failed my way through the last Hitman game. Though she took care of one of the... <sighs> yes, the other gets away and calls out for reinforcements, who takes the form of a transvestite bartender who slowly walks out of the bar and sets fire to a bunch of old newspapers out back. Is she attempting to burn down the bar? Why? We don't even cut back to the bar, so it might have burnt down, or it might not have. Are you beginning to see why I keep calling Blood the Last Vampire a tech demo? Things are happening in a narrative context, there's a sense that cause and effect are occurring, but there's no story actually being told. It's just a series of events that take place in a followable sequence. Which is the bare bones definition of a story, yes, but it's missing everything else. Like here, for instance. Saya runs off the base because she broke her sword during the fight in the nurse's office and runs to a pawn shop where she earlier spied a set of samurai swords. She then runs back to the school to find the thing that escaped, but then finds out that the sword is a fake. This was not played up as a joke or even an anticlimax, it's just a sequence that exists. And yet, remembering what I said in my Memories review, there is merit to the scenes themselves, because they are animated wonderfully. Easily, the standout moment is during the Halloween dance, where the nurse attempts to track down what she thinks is an injured girl, but winds up being held hostage. Look at all the people dancing in this scene, and nary a single asset is repeated or repurposed anywhere. This scene alone justifies this anime's existence, as this is top-notch quality animation. If you look at Blood the Last Vampire as a means for Production IG to tell the world what they can do, then you can see the merit within it. Unfortunately, that and the performances are the only places where merit lies. Even the acting is stymied by the script and characterization. Yoki Kudo does a great job with what she's given, but since there's little to Saya's character, there isn't a lot of room for her performance other than scowl until the credits roll. Additionally, the nurse, who at this point becomes a main supporting character, is played by Sami Nakamura, who is also tasked with acting in two different languages, but isn't able to pull it off like Kudo was. She should feel better anyway. You should really try not to worry too much, and just enjoy the festivity. 
What are you girls gonna dress up as? Witches? Vampires, maybe? I'll be the first to say that her English is leagues beyond my Japanese, but that doesn't help the fact that she is not able to sell her character in English. There is a reason why we look at bilingual actors with a sort of awe, and this is it. Looks like Saya has her hands full and screams for the nurse to run away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every white bread conservative's nightmare come true. Even anime isn't immune to the black guy must die in every horror flick cliche, and the poor sod winds up as the thing's lunch. Thankfully, Saya makes the save and runs off with the nurse to hide in a maintenance silo. She finally explains to the nurse that the monsters that they've been running from are actually blood-sucking demons. And they couldn't call them demons because... Dear God, help me. You say! Okay, besides the bullshit about these things only being killable with a powerful enough blow, what is up with Saya and Christianity? From her responses with the spook at the beginning and the nurse here, it seems like she's more annoyed with them bringing it up instead of her being in any kind of danger. She could even hold the cross in her hand without any repercussions whatsoever. So, from where I'm standing, this is less about keeping her from turning into a puddle, and more like, Ah! Don't remind me! But things are coming to a head when one of the demons crashes the party and a fire breaks loose when the nurse accidentally shoots a gas tank. However, the nurse isn't completely hapless and manages to break down the doors to the silo with a jeep, giving Bateau here an opening to give Saya a new sword, and the chance to do the cool girl pose. But it's not over yet as the other demon, you know, the bartender, tries to get away by flying to a plane that's taking off. I don't understand. What is it trying to do? Hitch a ride? How? Grabbing onto the wing and not letting go for dear life? Why can't it just fly out of the city? The only reason I could think of why this scene exists is so that Saya here could have a jeep chase in the final battle. It just exists for its own sake and has no basis in in-universe logic or reason which is a complete letdown because this is supposed to be the climax of the anime. Yeah, she just hovers over the dying demon, feeds it her blood, that kills it, which gives her blissful peace for some reason, and the spooks she works for abducts the nurse, and then John F. Kennedy here tells her that all that she witnessed was just a dream or something to that effect. Before you go, girl you saw, did she look like this? Okay, what the fuck? Was that the reason why you were mum all this time about Saya being a vampire? To lead up to this moment? We already fucking know this! And if you were trying to dissuade the nurse from remembering what happened, why the hell would you show her a picture of Saya? There's no point to it other than to inform the audience who are too stupid to figure it out for themselves. And why the hell did you mark the photograph for the date and the word vampire? Fucking vampire's kiss was more subtle than this! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! With her world completely demolished and Saya nowhere to be found, all that the nurse can do is sleepwalk through her life. The end, I guess. Yeah, the story just sort of... ends. Which is why I guess they took another crack at the story with the live-action adaptation. Yeah, there was a television series released between them, but the live-action movie was a direct adaptation of the original 2000 anime. It filled in a lot of gaps in the story, the existence of the spooks, the exact nature of Saya's vampirism, and the rest of her personal history. She finally drinks blood to sustain herself, and they got rid of the whole religious aversion angle too. It also added to the story with new characters and a new villain, but I feel like the additions were done very poorly. The villainess has at best 8 minutes of screen time, and her relationship with Saya is just eye-rollingly dumb. The side characters exist only to pad the running time, and the notion of the spooks being villainous feels wasted. I mean, the idea that the spooks are morally ambiguous to the point of reprehension is solid enough ground to work off of, but joined to this plot of Saya on a quest to kill this big bad demon, the spooks just feel unimportant and useless. 
The script is also poorly written with characters doing things and saying things they would have no knowledge of. It's so bad that this girl cuts herself to get herself to bleed to save Saya, even though she didn't know Saya was a vampire. That, and the CGI, is also laughably awful. But this comparison raises an interesting question. Which is better? The anime is way more technically impressive, but its story is pointless. The film has a complete story, but in order to get it there, it had to rely on useless characters and a boring, barely there villain. I'd say that both have their distinct shortcomings and sitting through them can be a chore for different reasons, but if push comes to shove, I'd say that the anime wins out, because it's half as long and more forgivable for its transgressions. The film? Not so much. There could be a well-written story that could spring from the source material, and for all I know, the television series did just that. But that will have to wait for another day, because the end of the year is coming up fast. And I feel like we have a crisis on our hands. Till next time. <laughs>